Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to day three. It's a brisk one here on Lake Fork on day three, mid 40s. Uh, we got a little bit of cool front. We got a northeast wind. So we'll see how this uh, plays out. Fortunately, some people messaged me on both Facebook and Instagram saying that there's a few spots I can try. Not like spot on the spot, but like general areas that I can try to catch a two pounder because that's the goal of this trip. You come to Texas, yeah. You come to Texas to catch two pound crappie. That's what you do. Potentially three pounders. So we're gonna run up north on Lake Fork and uh, fish some submerged timber first. And then hopefully I got enough gas to make a really long run. I think it's gonna be like nine miles, 10 miles to fish another bridge. Cause apparently there's some big ones on that bridge. So got a secret weapon today. We got some live minnows. I think they're still alive. Oh yeah, there they are. Live minnows. Possibly some slip bobber setups. I don't really know what we're gonna use. We're gonna switch it up. Goal is to catch a big one today. All right. Let's let it rip. That was a, uh, so that, that was a brisk run. Uh, what I've noticed on a lot of these reservoir systems, you, you, whew, that was a cold run. Yeah, it's definitely in the low 40s right now. On these reservoir systems, fishing the edges of the creeks during the fall by far outproduces any other tactic um these timber here I'll, I'll show you here when you get a chip like this that this is the lake masters mid-south chip highly recommend it just purely for the buoy system it shows the buoys you can drive through but this purple line that's the creek channel and all i'm going to do today is just troll these edge of this creek channel all the way through basically i i you can see I was pre-fishing this area. We got two creeks coming together right here. So I'm hoping that might be a good spot. But these fish right now, this time of year, crappie, they, they use this creek channel as highways. You know, on lakes that are, let's say, shallower. Lakes that have, let's say, only a three, four, five foot indentation of the creek channel, they'll still use that as like a highway um, to go from spot to spot. Here we got some pretty good contours. I mean, it goes from, what does it go to? It goes from like 25 foot on the flat to, you know, 40 feet in the bottom of the creek channel. So we got some pretty good contour drop. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm gonna be doing. It's calm enough today. I'll put this on live scope. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm seeing. Past couple days has been so windy that it's, it's virtually been impossible to, uh, to show you on live scope. How I'm doing, wow, that sun is really bright. All right. Let's get the 12 foot ACC out. See if we can jig up a two pounder. All right, we got fish 42 feet of water. My goodness. There's fish 20, 20 to 25 feet down on this massive tree. Down and catch one. If I can catch one, I can, uh, it's calm enough today. We can put the camera on, on the live scope and I can show you catching one here. So far this morning, it's been a tough bite. Been fishing since seven. It is now 10:15. Have not caught a fish. Had a couple come up and look at it. The guys that I'm fishing with today, I actually ran about three miles to get to this spot, but they uh, they're having the same issues. They're catching, you know, one or two. But it was not like yesterday where if you dropped it in front of them, they'd smack it. There we go. There he is. Yep. I don't think they're big, but they're probably, um, he's not a keeper. Bunch of black crappie down there. All right. Put the live scope on it. Probably can't see that black crappie. Let's get the live scope down there. Since I did find that school of black crappie, we're going to do something that uh, I don't know gets done a whole lot out here slip bobber but this is a very special kind of slip bobber this is by rod and bobs this is called the boss you can see here it's got a spring sensitivity let me know what you call it resistance the whole point of this is so that the fish when the fish comes up and grabs a minnow or the jig or whatever 
it can actually pull that and pull that minnow in or eat that minnow before that fish feels any type of resistance against it pushing that hook up into the fish's mouth so that's the point of these i'm going to be trying this one out on this massive tree first we gotta get a slip bobber set up going with the eight foot acc classic this is my go-to for slip bobber rigs this is a 1000 size pc fun honor xt reel eight pound mono um i was using a using braid when i was vertically jigging with this rod if you're using slip bobbers i highly recommend going to mono the line slides through that slip bobber a lot easier than braid so just a thought also make sure you get these things these are probably the best slip stops out there. So we're gonna rig this guy up. I got live minnows. We're gonna catch some crappie. We're gonna fill the live well up with some good eaters today. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a good day. That dude is flying. All right, slip stop engaged. Gonna have to put that way up the line because we're fishing in 20 we're gonna fish this thing about 25 feet down i feel like that's an unnecessary rooster tail that thing's like 15 feet in the air but we're gonna slide it right through the hole just like that slide it all the way down through the middle of the bobber it's gonna come out the other end there you go you got your Got your slip style bobber. We're gonna do, you know what? We'll try this split shot, the heavier one first. I believe this is an eighth ounce split shot. Might be a little heavy for this bobber, but we'll see. You gotta remember you're tying on a, a minnow too. What size is this? Two watt. These are some big crappie. Potentially is that those pound and a halfers. Let's go with a one aught one aught Aberdeen hook. Yeah, so this is what we're going with. One aught Aberdeen hooks by Zone Luck. Probably seen these in a couple videos from up north. They got that little bend in them right after the barb of the hook. Helps not tear up that fish's mouth and helps keep that minnow in place. I'm just gonna do a simple snell knot. Get this puppy tied on real quick. There we go. And had my weight. I'm gonna put the weight right above that that Aberdeen hook. Okay. Right above the Aberdeen hook. It's basically like a jig head. And this way that I guess that sensitivity spring, when that crappie hits it, I'll immediately be able to see whether this this, it's kind of got two bobbers. It's got the big bobber and it's got this little one on top here. I'll be able to see when that little one starts going down. All right, let's grab a minnow. I already set my depth. I might be a little deep. I, I think I have it at like 28 feet. I might need to raise it up a bit with my slip stop. Come on, bud. I like to hook them right underneath the jaw, just like that. So they can still swim around. Now right, let's get back over there. You can see them on the live scope. There are a ton of them on that tree. That's what I like to see right now. I don't think they're that big, but I think they're gonna be a bunch of, you know, 11, possibly 12 inch fish. I might need to add, oh, there's one. Oh no, he came off. 
I was gonna say I might need to add a little more weight because this bobber is not holding straight up and down but you know what I think it's gonna work as kind of like a tip up bobber There we go. Yeah, they're not big. <laughs> it's a white crappie. I thought there was a bunch of black crappie down there. I'm kind of using this more as a tip-up style bobber than, than that resistance. I mean, the resistance does help when that fish is, is taken taking that minnow but is this minnow still alive no change that up oh there's a fish i think it's a fish He's stuck in a yep there we go Hard fighting white crappie. Get in here, buddy. There's a keeper. Keeper number one for the day there. He was tight to timber. He was all wrapped up in that tree. Here's keeper number one for the day. That's pretty sad to say, considering it's like 1030. Oh no, it's 11 o'clock. Yeah, that's pretty sad to say. Come on, dude. Oh, here we go. Dang it. Come on. Take it. Look, he won't quite take it down. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, no, I missed him. I think he took my minnow, too. Yes, he did. We're going to go through a lot of minnows today, I think. That's fine. Not a ton of them, so... It's a good day to do it. Especially when you can't find them on single pieces of standing timber. This is the best school I've found all day. They're not monsters, I don't think. But they're still going to be fun to catch. Especially on a bobber. There's just something about watching a slip float or any type of bobber go down. It's just awesome. Yeah. That's a good one too. Oh no, I just funky hooked him. Thought for sure that was a good one. But it was a dink. Figure the best way to actually catch all these fish today is uh, bobber tactics. Just drop that minnow right in front of their nose. It's uh, it's going to be pretty tough, to be honest with you. For whatever reason, the bite completely shut off. Um, talked to another guy on the lake. He said, yeah, pretty much same deal. He's only caught a few. I don't know. Uh, we had a cold front come through this morning. Temp drop from like 70 to 45. So that probably has something to do with it. But hopefully we can catch at least a dozen or so eaters. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Yep. There he is. Be a decent one, buddy. Oh yeah, that's a good one. There we go. These are the ones we're trying to get. It is just taking forever to get these fish to bite. That's a probably pounding a eh, little over a pound maybe. These are the fish we are trying to go after on this brush pile. Just some nice eater fish. It's been super tough, super tough. And just having this slip bobber, I'm gonna throw this guy in the live well real quick. I 
having this slip bobber be able to just hold that minnow right in front of their face for extended periods of time has been super key to catching any fish today. I've thrown down a couple jigs and live minnows and just putting it right in front of their face. That's what's, uh, that's what's working today. So back to the grind, gonna put another minnow on. All right, well, you ever heard of jump fishing for bass? That's pretty much what we're doing for crappie right now. We are junk fishing for them. We are throwing everything we have to give them the bite. I actually just caught one off camera. Not the big one we're hoping for. A lot of traffic around me right now, so I'm trying to keep it quiet. Picking off ones and twos. Caught it on a Pete's Tackle uh, beer gut minnow, white. Finally getting in some good ones here. Ouch, ouch. Finally, they start hammering it. Little Pete's Tackle ice fishing jig, too. I downsized the hook, thinking maybe, maybe they want a smaller profile overall. Well, that's gonna end it for day three on Lake Fork. Managed a few nice ones today. That's about a pound and a quarter fish. Yeah, maybe a little, a little bit heavier. I think the biggest one I did catch off camera was about a pound and a half. Mixing it up today, this is the, uh, the boss, it's called the Boss by Rod and Bob's. Super sensitive slip bobber. Um, it's got that spring tension release. I'm actually gonna try this out. Now that I've found some, some crappie that hold tighter to a few trees to where they're schooled up in about 20 or 30, I'm gonna be using this tomorrow. Um, but I'll leave a link to this entire setup. This is the eight foot and I'll leave a link to that. Basically we're junk fishing today. For those of you guys that bass fish, you know what junk fishing is. You got like 14,000 different rods on your deck. 12 footer, these, this one, Finally figured out this was the go-to. This is a Pete's Tackle. It's actually, the jig is an ice jig from Pete's Tackle Shop. And this is called a beer gut minnow. I actually used these in Oklahoma when I was fishing with uh, Paul Potter, Crappie Fishing TV. And uh, they work great there. These white ones worked phenomenal the last probably hour of the day. And I uh, was able to catch my limit. Unfortunately, all my GoPro batteries died, so <laughs> you only saw probably I don't know, probably got like 10 or 12 catches. But I do have a limit, got my 25 fish for the day. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a tough day. Slowly figuring this lake out, um, day three. I think I got it now. I think I've kind of figured out where these fish are, um, at least to where I can catch limits pretty much every single day. And now we really gotta figure out where those two pounders are. I got some messages on uh, Facebook and Instagram saying that 
you know, this really isn't the greatest lake if you want to go for that trophy Texas three pound fish, but there are some consistent two pounders in here if you can get into the right creek channels. Um, so we're going to do a little bit more exploring tomorrow on day four. And yeah, we'll see what happens. If you got any comments or questions, I always appreciate hearing from you. I post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I'm going to get off the water. I got a ton of fish to clean. And uh, actually, JP and Pat, who are with me today, they also have a ton of fish in their live wells. So we got a lot of fish to clean tonight, but it's a good thing. Appreciate you watching again. We'll see ya.